If it wasn't for your wellies, where would you be? Uh, I don't know where we're going, no, do you? In Ely. Newark and Ely. And Trish is just putting my hat in my backpack. So, we're at St Monans. That's where we're going to be for the next few days. It's on the east coast of Scotland. So it's a lovely little campsite. We're parked up behind us there. And we've got two visitors with us. We've got my sister Mo. There she is. My brother-in-law Sandy. And the little one. Oh, the little one. Jordy. Where's Jordy? Jordy, there you are. And Kira, they two are getting on great, aren't they? Yeah. So we're going to have a wee walk along the Fife coastal path. We're not doing the full thing. <laughs> no, but the plans are to get to Ely and maybe check out Newark Castle as well. I'm not quite sure how far it is, but we're going to find out, that's for sure. We'll have a good go at it. We will. You got a little cough? Oh. I'm taking the quick way down, and it's steep. The others have taken the longer, less steep way, but it doesn't take them long to catch up. It only takes us 15 minutes to walk into St Monin's village, and we turn left to go down to the harbour to have a good look round. something sinister here. I shouldn't have worried. There's a clue here to where we are. If it wasn't for your wellies, where would you be? It's the St Monin's Welly Boot Garden. trail is taking us towards St Monin's Parish Church, which dates to 1369 and was built by King David II Bruce. It's one of the finest remaining middle-aged churches in Scotland. We're taking the weight off for five minutes in this sheltered spot in the church grounds. Wee Geordie has the best seat, and we don't think that Kira's jealous. The church is said to be closer to the coast than any other church in Scotland, and the walk is going to take us round the side. It's our turn, and it's steeper than it looks. The flagstones are all on a slope, except for the stepping stones, and you have to take your time because they can be difficult to spot. We can make out these ruins in the distance, and that's going to be the destination for this walk. 
but first it's time to let the dogs play on the beach and we can skim some pebbles. Competition time and Trish is first up. And it's a two, so it's two to beat. Come on, Mo. Show us what you're made of. And it's a four for Mo. Ka-ching! Sandy's up next. Sandy gets a four. Camera didn't catch it, though. My turn. Ah, oh, just a one. I give up. The old church is still in the background, but it's the feature just up ahead that's grabbed our attention. It looks like a cairn, but as we get closer, we realise that it's not. It's a stone ducot built in the 16th century by the Sandilands family. They lived at the neighbouring castle. It was quite common to keep pigeons back then as a vital source of fresh meat. No do's at home today though. The neighbouring castle is Newark Castle. Construction here started in the 15th century by the Kinloch family and it was further developed over the centuries. At one point it had five storeys but they've since been reclaimed by the sea through coastal erosion. It was a good wee walk then, Mo. Did you enjoy that? It was good, aye. It was quite bracing. Aye. It was enough <laughs> for me, though. Good weather, though. It aye. wasn't raining. Was we'll good. get back to the vans now in the caravan. Aye. Are you liking your wee caravan? I do like it. But unlike our van, you can just unhitch and you've got the car. Got the car. And you can just you nip go. away in the car. Go wherever you fancy. Yeah. No uh, and you've got lots of space in there. It's, it's a cupboard space. It's good for clothes. You don't. You can keep your clothes. You can keep your towels. You don't have to pack unpack. Yeah. It's good for keeping everything in. And you've got your, All nice your pots big bed. and pans. Big double. Oh, and yeah. Another wee double. Aye. I've got but you can make it up in a double, can't you? You can make it a double. We've got two doubles. Double and a single. Yeah. It's great for. So we've got anybody mm. coming right. to stay. You do much it cooking in it. We do. And so well, we've got a wee toaster and a wee. Hob, and then sometimes we'll take the grill, which is really good. You should put outside on the table, and if uh -huh. you cook outside in the awning, or if it's really sunny, it's yeah. great. You could just hook it yeah. up, get your steak and sausages and onions and everything oh, on. Oh, lovely, lovely, lovely. You lovely. don't cook all the time, is no, it? Yeah? No, no, no. Oh, you didn't cook last night. <laughs> didn't cook last night. It was fish and chips from okay. Einster. Yeah, good old that Einster. Award winning chippy, wasn't it? It was delicious. And tonight, it's probably another carry out. 
More eh? than likely. More we're getting, than likely. We're getting lazy in our I old age, getting, aren't we? <laughs> I think we're getting lazy. I don't fancy cooking after that walk. Well, nobody fancied cooking at night, so we just had something light. We certainly didn't fancy going out for food, not in this rain. It had arrived in buckets. Next morning and time for Kira's walk. The gull is dancing for worms after all that rain last night. Right, I've plans for the day. I've had a wee chat with Sandy and Mo. Okay. Met them while I was out, and because it's going to be chucking it between 12 and 2 today, apparently, with really heavy rain, we thought we'd leave a bit early, maybe about half past 10, walk along to Pit and Weem. Mm -hmm. Right, Kerry Pups, do you want it outside? Okay then. Here we go. There you go, tuck in. So this is where we are pitched up on this site. It's got this reddish orange gravel. It just gets everywhere. Look at the state of the place. We're just continually sweeping out the van. I think we prefer grass these days, don't we? Yeah, I prefer grass. When we're pitched up. Um, it's easier to get the pegs in and you didn't get all this mess in the van. Yeah. Having a little bit of a sweep out? Yeah, just a wee bit. You've got the same problem as us. These little orange chips get everywhere, don't they? You ready to go, Jordy? Jordy? You ready to go? I think he's ready. We're heading back down to the coastal path, this time turning left for Pit and Weem. A cute patchwork doodle of some kind drops by to say hello. 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 What are you saying? Through the binoculars, Mo has spotted a small fishing boat. Sandy is looking further out, about seven miles over to the Isle of May with its lighthouse. And if he tries hard, he can just about focus on Bass Rock. It's off the coast of North Berwick, about 10 miles from here. We've reached St. Monin's tidal pool. <laughs> <laughs> I would maybe in the summertime, but... <laughs> I mean, it's, it's absolutely brilliant in the summer. Yeah, I Kira. bet it is, yeah. It's really busy this year. Yeah, this is the first year the pool's really been operational for right. about what? 40 years. Was it? Okay. Yeah, so some local volunteers came and cleared out the bottom, drained it, drained it, the bottom and of the pool. Out all the... Next to the pool is the remains of the old St Monin's salt pans, and we head in for a look. In the late 17th and early 18th centuries, the windmill would have pumped seawater into the pan houses where coal-fired furnaces would evaporate the water.
Not better, Kira. Kira, I'll keep you dry, won't it? Come on, you. Right, let's go. Just half a mile to Pit and Weem. We're making our way along the path. The rain's come on. It's getting a little bit muddy underfoot. Moe has spotted some bindweed growing here. She's got some in her garden and so she knows it can be a bit of a nightmare. As we move around the corner, the bindweed is becoming more and more dense. The small trees and shrubs and all the undergrowth is being completely smothered. The white trumpet flowers may look quite pretty, but you wouldn't want this growing in your garden. Just look at what it's doing to this signpost. We're having lunch at the cocoa tree shop. Gemma's just sent me this on the phone. You have to guess what animal it is. Any ideas? It looks kind of alien, doesn't it? That's a spider. Sandy? Spider. Is it a spider? Spider. I'll see spiders, but I have no idea. Well, I have no idea either. What is it? I don't know. I'll go back to Anaska. All will be revealed later. In the cocoa tree shop, we're picking up the key to St. Philan's Cave, and that's going to be our next port of call. We've been directed down Cove Wind, and Geordie's getting a lift. It's all right for some. Mm -hmm. 
we've arrived at the entrance to St. Fillin's Cave. Fillin was an Irish missionary who was active in Fife during the early and middle 7th century. The fish is an early symbol of Christianity. Most of his life he spent as a hermit in this very cave, and the village was named after him. Pittenweem means place of the cave. I wonder if these were for candles. It's said that St. Philan managed to pray and write in the secluded gloom of the cave by means of a light which glowed from his left arm as he wrote with his right. Is it a dead end up there, Mo? Yes. We're not totally sure if this is, or if this isn't, the original 7th century altar. Old maid. We've had a really good day out. And it's back to Mo and Sandy's caravan for a game of cards. Oh, by the way, remember that photo I showed you? The yeah. eye. Aye. I just aye, had a message aye. from Gemma. Aye, uh -huh. aye, aye, aye. You know what it is? <gasps> we oh. said a spider. Ah, we did see home. It was a spider. Mm. I would never have got oh, that. A spider, but then now you sort of picked you off it. Aye. aye. Oh, How did you get on with that one at home? Did you suss out it was a spider or not? I well, hope you liked the video. If you did, give us a thumbs up and you'll see us on the next one. Ta-da!